Good evening, ALC Small Groups. My name is Pastor Jared, and I am so privileged to be sharing a teaching with you all tonight. The past few weeks, we have been talking about how does Jesus give hope for today? And so we talked about relationships, we talked about finances, we talked about future in Jesus and growth in Jesus. If you have not listened to those teachings, we had some amazing small group teachers that taught those. You should go back and watch them. They're on this playlist. Um, But tonight, what we're going to be looking at is about fulfillment in Jesus, specifically how we can find fulfillment by being the Good Samaritan in America. Now, I want to set the scene here real quick just by reading the passage that we're focused on tonight. This is in Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 25, and it says this, And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law, and how do you read it? And the man answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, Who is my neighbor? The man is asking this, and Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He had mercy. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever you spend, I will repay when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? And the man said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. Now, when we read this passage, it it obviously, it paints a big picture. Uh, I always have the Veggie Tales episode come to mind when I think of this. It's highly entertaining. I'm sure it's on YouTube if you want to go check that out later. Uh, But there's this, this idea of all of these people who socially should be responsible to help a person and have the right standing to do so, but they just choose to walk right on by. And then the most unlikely person, a Samaritan, who would have been hated in that day purely because of his heritage, comes along and he helps the man. Not only does he help him, but he goes above and beyond to pay for his care, to pay for his aftercare, to make sure that this person receives mercy and is recovered from what has happened to him. Now, this parable is amazing in the way that Jesus taught it, but I want to share another testimony, and this is from Corey Ten Boom. Uh, and this is from this is just one of her testimonies that she shared. And it's so powerful. I cried the first time I heard this. Uh, I'm not saying I'm going to make everybody cry, but prepare yourself. You might cry at the hearing of this, just because it is such an amazing example of something that I think we might have more of a relation to that will help us understand the level of mercy that Jesus has called us to. Uh, so this uh, is after World War II. Corey Ten Boom and her sister Betsy had been prisoners in the Ravensbrück concentration camp. And her sister actually died in the concentration camp. Uh, Corrie Ten Boom survived. And after World War II, she decided to leave Holland, which was her home country, go back to Germany and to share the gospel with the lost and hurting people of the broken nation of Germany. And so she's there, she's in a church, and she is speaking on the unending forgiveness and mercy of God. And as she's sharing this, she looks up and she recognizes a man in the back. This man was a prison guard at the Ravensbrück concentration camp and had actually beaten Corey Ten Boom and her sister Betsy. And Corey immediately recognized him, but she could tell that he did not recognize her. She finishes uh, her sharing of this unending forgiveness and how uh, 
God can toss our sins as far as the depths of the sea away and, and all of this redemption. And the man actually gets up and walks up to her and says, I heard you talk about Ravensbrook. I was actually a prison guard there. And I have since become a Christian since the end of the war, but I feel like I am undeserving and separated from the forgiveness of God that you just talked about and that everybody else has been talking to me about. And he had the audacity in that moment to say, will you forgive me? He needed to hear it from a person. Now, he didn't recognize her, but he probably knew that there was a high chance that he was one of the perpetrators of some of the terror and the atrocities that Corey Ten Boom personally had lived, along with all of the other people in his concentration camp. And he asked for this forgiveness, and Corey Ten Boom in that moment knew that she did not have within her the ability to forgive this man. But she knew the truth of the gospel. And so she knew that if she could lift her hand, at least in obedience to the Holy Spirit and to Jesus, that Jesus would partner with her and forgiveness could be extended. And so without emotion, without feeling, as stiffly as possible, she reaches out her hand, she grabs this man's hand and says, I forgive you. And the Holy Spirit partnered in that moment and extended forgiveness to this man from one of the most unlikely places that you could imagine. Now, the reason I wanted to share this story along with us reading the Good Samaritan is to show the level of mercy that Jesus is calling each of us to live up to. Now, let's remember how this started. At the beginning of Luke 10, uh, or excuse me, starting in verse 25, lawyer stands up and says, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And it gets boiled down to what we now know as the greatest commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have answered correctly, do this and you will live. So what we have to do now is we have to live in true surrender to living out the greatest commandment, and it will have eternal and lasting rewards. Now, the testimony of Corey Ten Boom, obviously, uh, a lot of us are not going to have that dramatic of an experience of extending mercy, but it can have just as significant an impact in a person's life. And what I want to do is I want to, to break this down just to simplicity and how we can apply this to our lives. And I want to call this the uninterrupted gospel. That's what we're going to call this tonight, the uninterrupted gospel. And it starts with this, love God. The uninterrupted gospel starts with loving God. You have to have a personal relationship with Him. We show our love for God through belief in Him and through faith to follow through on His commands. And what that really means, again, to just keep this simple, is we have to live in the truth that repentance really does lead to redemption. That's how we stay in tight, close relationship with the Lord following his commands and repenting when we miss the mark. That's how we show that we love God. Second, and this is gonna seem a little out of order, but this is really important. You have to love yourself. It sounds weird, and I'm not trying to get you to be conceited or anything, but you have to learn to see yourself the way that Jesus sees you. If we all were honest, we would probably have several things about ourselves that we really don't like. And maybe we've done things that we think are unforgivable or unredeemable. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. Jesus saw so much intrinsic value in each of us that he died on the cross for your sins, for my sins, for our future children's sins. He died because he saw that value and he loved us. We love him because he first loved us. We must know that he died for us, but also that it has the immediate effect on your life. Do you see yourself the way Jesus does? Once you do, you'll realize that you can love yourself. And it's important because it says to love your neighbor as yourself. You care for yourself. You take care of yourself. And so now we need to learn to care for others and take care of others. Love your neighbor. 
God's compassion and mercy through you to your neighbor. That's how this works. Forgiven and redeemed people want to see people forgiven and redeemed. That's the uninterrupted gospel. Loving God, loving yourself, and then that love extends to others. And this is what changes the world. This is the upside down gospel that changes the world. I believe right now that God is wanting to extend mercy to someone that is listening to this teaching. And you might feel uncomfortable, you might feel like this doesn't apply to you, but what I wanna do right now, and this is gonna be different, is I don't want you to look around, I want you to look me right in the eye. I'm gonna to try to look dead at the camera while I do this. And I'm gonna say a prayer and I want you to repeat this after me. This might be your first time praying a prayer like this. This might be your thousandth time praying a prayer like this. But what we have to do is we need to stay surrendered to Jesus. And if you haven't surrendered, this is your opportunity. So I want you to repeat after me. Say, thank you, Jesus, for having mercy on me when you died on the cross. I confess my need for you and I give you my life. Jesus is Lord. It's that simple. And mercy has been extended to you. That's how powerful our Jesus is. Now, there are so many other things that we could talk about with this teaching, but I wanna just reiterate this one last time here at the end. The uninterrupted gospel that shows mercy to the world goes like this. The love from God, the love for myself, and then the love for others. We need to have that relationship with God. We need to learn to see ourselves the way Jesus does, so then we can see other people the way that Jesus sees them. And this is how mercy changes the world and leads more people to Jesus. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. I hope that this teaching spoke to you and maybe challenged you and that the questions in the description below will just help your small group uh, dive deeper into this passage. Thank you guys for joining us tonight and we look forward to seeing you guys on future small group teachings.